Hey, it's Bran, and fall is finally here. So to say farewell to this summer, we're sculpting this beachy peachy. This was illustrated by the great Max Day underscore zero zero on Twitter. In this beach episode of Brand Sculpts, I'm gonna try to match Max's shapes, styles, and colors to try and make the ultimate 3D 2D fake out. Stick around and find out how I pulled it all together. Let's go. I didn't record it, but I spent a little bit of time in Photoshop before I started this sculpt to edit Max's painting of Peach into an easier to use A pose for reference. I pulled the image into Blender and started outlining the face by extruding a single vert around the front of the face and in side view. This kind of acts like a shape boundary where all we have to do is fill everything in between. After I extrude a vert around for the eye and the mouth, I start bridging faces to fill things out. Now that we have an outline for the side of the face and the front of the face, we also have this eye landmark and the mouth landmark, it's as easy as bridging faces. But once you get to the nose, you'll have to kind of do a little bit of interpolation on your own. Since we don't really have a crease on the inner nose to go by, this part's gonna kind of be guesswork. To finish off the head, I added a sphere and a cylinder to have something to snap the rest of the verts to. Using this sphere as the back of the head and the cylinder as the neck is going to help us kind of speed up the whole head making process as we don't have to worry about where exactly certain things need to go. We can just snap vertices directly to those shapes. Treating the rest of the head modeling like regular retopology. So what is better, blocking out then sculpting the head or straight up modeling the head from reference? Well, it seems like with sculpting you can have more fun exploring your shapes and if you don't have a good frontal reference this would be probably the way to go. But if you have a good reference, then it seems like modeling the face could get you more exact result. Plus, it cuts some time since you won't have to do any retopology down the road. This is only the second time that I've made a face this way, and it seems like it works pretty well. At least for anime style faces. So really, in the end, I guess it just depends. Not only on um, if it's efficient or if it's easy, but really it also depends on what you like to do, how you like to create the faces. So like if it's easy for you to just jump into sculpt mode and get the shapes that you want by pulling and pushing and scraping, then straight out sculpting the head should be fine for you. But if you're having problems finding those shapes, then maybe using your reference to be more precise might be better for you. I'll probably experiment with the whole modeling against the reference thing a few more times, but I think I'm probably going to just stick with sculpting the face and just reserve this for more 2D looking sculpts. For the body, I blocked it out using subdivided cubes. I like using subdiv cubes rather than sculpting out UV spheres or other shapes with a bunch of selectable geometry because you only have to deal with as little as eight vertices. Adding loop cuts if I need more control or a different shape. The fewer the verts, the more geometry each vert will move and the smoother the shape is between those verts. Once we have the body blocked out, I applied all the modifiers and joined all the pieces together remesh them and started smoothing out where these shapes joined. Since most of the details will be in the textures later on, we don't really need to worry too much about sculpting. We mainly want to have an appealing silhouette. Next, I picked up from where I left off on the neck and used the body sculpt as a snapping guide to retopologize the body. I uh, forgot to unpause the recording when I got back from eating dinner, so there's no retopology footage. You'll just have to trust me when I say that I definitely did do it, and I definitely didn't have fun doing it. No, I'm just kidding. I don't mind retopology. I know it gets a bad rap sometimes for being either uh, tedious or monotonous, but I actually enjoy doing it if I have the free time. Even on something like this, it's just a one-off sculpt. Uh, anyways, to get you caught up on the unrecorded stuff, I retopologized the body. I also made her bikini top by duplicating verts from the base mesh and scaled it up. And the hair was made by shaping more subdivided cubes. You can also see here that I added a bunch of flat colors as well. The materials for this is just an emission node hooked up into the output. It's no nothing fancy. The emission ignores light, so that means all shadows for the sculpt will be painted on later by hand, and it gives it a completely flat color. I finished up by modeling the rest of her outfit and accessories. Her flower necklace, the blue pendant, her sarong, and her sunglasses. Next, I threw on a Rigify rig, lined up the bones, and paired it to the model with automatic weights. Then, using the handles generated from the rig, I tried my best to match the model's pose to the reference. Alright, so far everything looks okay, but not great. 
To really sell this 2D look, we're gonna have to do a lot of texture painting. But before we can do a lot of texture painting, we need to do UV unwrapping. And ugh, UV unwrapping is the worst. I'm not kidding this time, I really don't like doing UVs, which most people usually don't like doing UVs. Regardless, I did them anyways, and ended up with a few different sets that will end up being like five image textures. Before I get started painting, I wanted to mention that I'd picked up Craft Reaper's Texture Painting Brush Pack on Gumroad for $5. Blender's Texture Paint Mode has like only one default brush for each tool. You can make your own brushes of course, but that consists of making or hunting down some brush textures, importing it in, and then dialing in your settings and getting everything tuned in. I opted to pay the $5 for the pack because I wanted to save time and support a cool artist. He also has a free version just with less brushes, so check that out if you want to give it a go for free. To make things easier while painting, I open the image editor in a new window with Max's original painting on the left, so I can always have a reference to refer to. Then I started sampling from the ref and layering colors onto the model. You can sample colors by holding S and whatever your cursor is over when you release S will be sampled for you to paint with. Painting is pretty straightforward. I tried to mimic everything I seen in the reference. I mainly ended up using the hard round brush and the pastel brush with a little bit of rake brush here and there. It gets a bit harder when we get to painting things that are to the side or behind Peach where the reference doesn't show. In this case, we can continue strokes around until they meet up with themselves, like on the arms, or try to follow patterns of how things were shaded on the front and apply them to the sides and the back. If you're having trouble painting in a tight spot like the armpit or the inside elbow pit, you can select the rig and put it in the rest position to get her back into a T-pose for easier access to paint. As I've said in previous videos, texture painting is slowly turning into one of my favorite parts of making 3D sculpts. It seems like it could really bring a piece together, and in this situation, really starting to sell that 2D look that I'm trying for. So we're entering the final stretch here with the background. I've been sitting on this project for quite a while now and I wasn't about to model the background in 3D so I decided to use the elements of Max's original drawing. The only problem is that his 2D peach is kind of in the way. So to get a clean background I went into Photoshop and started cutting peach out of the image along with the little daisies. Then I started copying and using what existing assets that were left over to recreate the background painting in where I needed to. I brought the edited background into Blender via images as planes then subdivided and curved it to sort of a half cylinder shape. I also brought in the little speech bubble and the daisies as separate planes and placed them in front of the background. Now when we orbit around, we'll get sort of a parallax effect. And with the background finished, it's finally done! Let's check it out. I've put a free download to this model up on my Gumroad. Repose it, take your own renderers, do whatever you want with it. I did all of my corrective in pose sculpting in shape keys, so if you decide to repose, you could drag those to zero and have a clean T pose. Also, if you choose to do your own poses, you'll probably want to repaint the shadows to make it work. Special thanks to Max Day on Twitter for giving me permission to model his beautiful illustration. Links to anything I've mentioned is in the description below. If you have any questions, just comment and I'll get to them as soon as I can. All right, bye.